I'm Edie Lush, I'm executive editor of Hub Culture, really pleased to be here in the Ice Hub with Jeremy Collar. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for inviting us. Chair of Fair and Chief Investment Officer for Collar Capital. Okay, Jeremy, do you think that agriculture is on the agenda enough here at COP26? It's not really on the agenda at all. So COP26 has done a fantastic job at, of addressing fossil fuels, but the largest contributor after fossil fuels is animal agriculture, and that needs to be addressed. Okay, so tell me about how you think it needs to be addressed. Um, well, that's very simple. We are actually um, feeding 75 billion animals for 7.8 billion humans annually. And that is not sustainable. You know, from a deforestation point of view, 91% of Amazonian deforestation is a result of, a result of uh, livestock production, and 85% of uh, soya is used as feed for them. Um, deforestation obviously uh, has a lot to do with climate risk. And um, in terms of methane production, there's more greenhouse gases from, from meat production than the whole of the transport sector. So it needs to be addressed. Jeremy, do you think investors understand the risks in their portfolios regarding agriculture, the way they're starting to understand fossil fuels? Oh my gosh, so it's a journey. When I started FAIR in 2000, and uh, we started FAIR in 2013 and launched it in 2015. And when we started it, I went to uh, the main hub, Principles for Responsible Investment, which has 130 trillion of AUM investors. And it's the, it's, it's the hub, like ICE hub, mm -hmm. it's the hub uh, that was started by the United Nations in 2006, where ESG came from in a way. Hmm. And, and, and that hub has grown and it allows a lens to look through investment. So uh, I'll just give you an example, just for the audience hmm. on ESG. You know, investors have a different lens. So if we're building a textile factory in, 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 a, in Bangladesh, let's hmm. say, we want to make sure there are fire exits and foundations not because of the interests of the workers, right. but it's good business. Right. And once you start looking through that lens, you are able to get sustainable profits and it's good business to be good. And so when we started on this journey, uh, PRI, its Principles for Responsible, mm -hmm. went to its members, because I thought, why not do it through them? I thought if we could get Animal Ag as one of the issues on PRI, it would change the world. Mm. And, th and they were very support the executive was very supportive. They went to their investors in 2015 and no one was interested. Hmm. It's, it's amazing. And then, so we launched FAIR anyway, Farm Animal Investment Risk and Return, got, had a small group of investors, you know, large, uh, uh, right. about six trillion. Mm -hmm. And with our first engagement was on antibiotics hmm. and food in April 2015. We went to 20 restaurant chains like McDonald's, like Burger King, mm -hmm. like KFC, which is owned by young brands, mm -hmm. and only one of the 20 restaurant chains had an antibiotics policy. 80% of antibiotics are used on factory farms in the US. This is so that the animals can be kept in close quarters, and because it, it breaks down the biome, it makes them fatter faster. So the, so this antibiotics policy, by the because and then we went with um, 78 investors, $4.7 trillion, and we went to the 20 global restaurant chains, McDonald's, KFC, etc. By the end of 2019, all 20 restaurant chains had an antibiotic policy. Hmm. Because we own them. Right. You, know, you, the citizens, us, the managers of your money, actually own McDonald's, Tyson's, and KFC, and uh, Burger King, and McDonald's. Mm. We own them. And that acknowledgement, and, that, and then starting to use, understand that lens, and understand that um, 
human global sustainability is important and antibiotics are destroying us. Mm. You know, it's a gift we've been given and we're, we're destroying it. It's bad business. Now, the reason it's bad business, which is the important part of this, is there could be class actions. There could be regulations. So Jerry Brown, the governor of California last year, um, came into effect the banning of everyday use of antibiotics. Next year, the EU is banning the everyday mm. use of antibiotics. These are real risks, investment risks. Mm. You could get, uh, yeah. So, so you know, once you look through that lens, investors have to act in a way to protect their interests. And it's the same with climate. So, for instance, the deforestation, you know, you had 60 NGOs in, in Brazil writing a manifesto to protect something called the, the, the Cerrado, which is the biggest savanna in the world, and it's mostly in Brazil. And um, the city wrote the manifesto. Now, the food companies like um, Kroger and Tesco's and others were very supportive of it and came together to support them and said, we will not use the Cerrado land and we found alternative land. And they went to investors and they couldn't find, they found one investor mm -hmm. actually. And then they came to us and we had six trillion uh, within a week to support, the owners to support. And that, so, you know, all, all the fair farm animal investment risk and return, dot org, <laughs> has, 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 um, has done, is become a collective, a voice, a hub, an exchange of views. So it's about materiality. Mm -hmm. It's not about mor mor morality for investors. It's about bridging the knowledge gap for investors and then engaging with the companies where there's risk and opportunities. And so you come to climate then, and so we did the deforestation. Then you look at, well, you can't get below the Paris two degrees limit unless you deal with right. food. And so um, we went to, we started a sustainable protein engagement with supermarkets like mm. Kroger and Walmart and Tesco's and Sainsbury's and saying that, you know, what are we going to do? There's going to be regulations. It's not sustainable to feed mm. the planet or, um, and, and there will be regulations on climate and carbon costs, et cetera, and taxes. So you need to put more plant protein on the meat aisle mm. to future-proof yourselves. Now, and that's very powerful when owners tell you to do something. It's slightly different to an NGO. Right, absolutely. You mentioned alternative protein, working with supermarkets. I wonder where you see the opportunities in the space. So, yeah, so ESG, Environmental Social Governance, um, is all about risks and opportunities for investors, looking through that lens. In terms of opportunities, you know, more, putting more plant protein on the meat aisle, etc., um, creates safety for investors. It's, you know, you've got to look at the oatly and mm -hmm. other, other alternative milks. I mean, massive some, success, oatly. Massive success, but look, listen to this stat. 10 years ago, da dairy alternatives were 1% of US sales. Today, it's over 10%. Hmm. Now, what's happened is two of the, lar two, the two largest dairy producers went into Chapter 11 in the last two years because of this. Hmm. That's massive risk, but balanced against that risk is the opportunity of investing in alternatives. Hmm. And there are, and, and alternate, there's a huge amount of capital now going into alternative protein because we're realizing that. Um, if we need 75 billion animals to feed 7.8 billion humans, how many other animals will we need to feed 10 billion? It's not sustainable. What we're seeing today is investors seeing a massive opportunity from, from, from looking at groups like Kraft Heinz, who have been left behind a little bit compared to Nestle, so we're talking about big companies as well, to also the technology. We had a green revolution in the 1930s and that really uh, transformed the way we grow cereal and create an abundance of cereal. Today we have a food tech revolution and that food tech revolution is our hope. We have a choice. We have a choice to 
put, eat no fish, for instance. Eat less fish. Grow fish on land, you know, putting them on all the tanks, which we're doing now, on land, or to grow them in a lab. It's our choice. It's in our hands where we go from here. Jeremy Collar, thank you so much for being a partner here in the ICE Hub here in Glasgow at COP26. And I'm Amy Ash.